Welcome back to Dragonfall. We're searching the compound room by room. I don't know if there's any particular order we should be doing this in. I'd like to see all of it. Or, well, I don't know. Hera was not supposed to be here, so I don't totally know what Glory's rush is. You hear voices speaking in low tones throughout the wood, through the wood of the door. You can't make out the words, but regular choruses of rough laughter tell you that the people on the other side are enjoying themselves. More of Harrow's acolytes. If we walk through that door, they'll attack us just like the last time. Uh, this is just stupid. Of course they're acolytes. They wouldn't be here otherwise. We're looking for a key to get past that warded door. Could the girl who has it be in, be in there? There's a pause before she responds. Yes, it's a definite possibility. When I was Harrow's second, I practically lived in that room. What is it, a dorm, a lounge or something? Her mouth tightens. Yeah, you could call it that. A special place for Harrow's inner circle. The acolytes and the bait girls and Harrow's wives. Marta and I used to spend a lot of time in there. Let's keep moving. Let's go check these doors. If all of them have stops, then then we'll decide what to do once we're informed. Oh, just gonna slam this one open, okay. Well, van, what's in the van? Glory pauses at the side of the van. She traces the side of it with a claw. I remember cruising the back alleys of to Bingen, looking for kids in need of help. The bait girls, Marta and the others like her, would offer them money or food or drugs or sex, whatever it took to get them into the van. And once they piled in, Harrow and I would be waiting to greet them. I remember so many nights like that. She frowns. I remember how much I used to enjoy it. Coming back here shows integrity, Glory. Most runners that I know wouldn't have done what you're doing tonight. Left to my own devices, I probably wouldn't have. You pushed me to do this, to find some semblance of redemption. I owe you for that. You don't owe me anything. She shrugs. Tell yourself whatever you like. We both know the truth. Come on, let's keep moving. Now let's check out this vent. Uh, all right. We'll take this kit in exchange for the other. Uh, I guess we'll swap this. Another one. It's a pretty good haul. I guess that's the garage. Oh, I guess, yeah, there's the doors. Okay. Not where I thought the garage was. I thought the garage would be over here. Um, all right. This is the Initiate's dormitory. The new arrivals are brought here. There's still hope for these kids, Alice. Harold hasn't had the chance to ruin them yet. Uh, apparently, no matter what we say, we're going to get cut off. Good to know. We'll try to get them out of here. Gloria raises a hand, suddenly alert. Wait, listen. Movement in the other room. You strain your ears to listen. Soft voices from inside of the room come drifting out of a nearby vent. You hear a woman's voice. The sound is crisp and smooth and sweet, and it instantly puts you at ease. Calm down, dear. It's probably nothing. No need to worry yourself. We're so far off the beaten track, we don't get a lot of visitors. Out of the corner of your eye, you can see Glory's back stiffen. She flinches as though she's been stung. Another voice, high-pitched and pleading, an adolescent boy. 
But what if it is someone? What if the bad people have found us? What if they followed me here and they've come to... The female voice cuts in, soft and comforting. Well then, we'll send them away. You're perfectly safe here, you have to believe that. Don't worry, dear heart. Harold won't let anyone hurt you. Not here, in this place. Not ever again. You hear another boy's voice. This one is deeper. Are you certain, Marta? Positive. Be calm, all of you. As long as you're here with us, nothing bad will ever happen to you. Is that your Marta, Glory? She gives a curt nod. Not mine. Harrow's. But she's the Marta, she's the Marta from my story, yes. What do you want to do? Glory pauses, grits her teeth. Finally, she spits out an answer. If she's still here, she'll be Harrow's number one, my old position. He had his way with all of us, but he was always sweet on Marta. That means that she'll have the key to the shrine room. Maybe we can talk to her, convince her to give us the key. Maybe, but not here and not now. Those kids in there, they'd all die for her. They already love her. That's what she does. We can't risk confronting her in that room. If the situation turns ugly, any one of those kids will happily eat a bullet for her. That's not what I came here to do. If what you've said about her is true, then she deserves to die every bit as much as Harrow does. Part of me wants to kill her. She's the reason why a lot of, the ki of kids wound up here, including me. She scowls, and the razors flick out of her fingertips. A second later, she retracts them. We deal with her later, though. I won't, hurt, I won't hurt any more kids voluntarily. Marta's voice floats back out through the vent. Hush now, boys, and get some rest. You've got a big day tomorrow, the biggest day of your lives. You get to meet Harrow. I promise you, after you speak with him, you'll see the whole world in a different way. A better way. The adolescent voice trembles out of response. All right, Marta. Have a good night. A lovely musical laugh pours through the vent. You too, dear heart, all of you. You hear the distant sound of a door sliding shut. Glory takes a deep breath and releases it. The coast is clear. We can handle the initiates. They're just a bunch of scared kids. Without Marta, there's no... Without Marta there to egg them on, they won't try anything. Step away. Let's check the other doors. I think that's the way forward, but I'd like to know what's going on elsewhere. Well, what is this? Bathroom? Bathroom with no toilet? Send it to the stash. Oh, there's the bath. I do appreciate a bathroom that has a separate... Well, wait, there's no toilet in there either. I do appreciate a bathroom that has, like, segregated spaces for the different things. Um, but uh, that's still weird. No toilet. Nobody poops in cyberpunk settings. <laughs> As you open the refrigerator door, a whiff of ammonia sticks in your nostrils. Watery light glints off the door's polished interior. The fridge is stacked full of large plastic bins, all tightly sealed and neatly labeled. It's hard to tell through the opaque plastic, but they appear to be full of meat. Inspect the containers. You pop the lid off a container to take a closer look. The first thing that hits you is the smell. The meat in here is beyond rancid. White mold frosts the sides of the bin, and it's all that you can do to keep from gagging. As you rush to keep, put the lid back on, you recognize a familiar shape in the rotten meat. A mangled human hand. 
Is that what I think it is? Glory's voice is flat. Ritual supplies. The adversary prefers them aged. Harrow teaches all of the initiates how to do it, how to harvest the meat, how to store it, how to label it. Nobody likes doing it at first, but you learn. By the end, it doesn't even bother you anymore. I kind of don't want to ask Glory about it, but I do want to hear the dialogue. Glory, did you ever do this? She fixes you with an emotionless stare. I was Harrow's right hand, remember? What do you think? I don't want to think about it. Then don't. She turns away from you. Come on, let's keep moving. I was sort of hoping there was more discussion there, as gruesome as it is, but... Is this his office? It's just open. Interesting. An ostentatiously large tome sits cradled in, on, a, on this pedestal. The paper is robust and fibrous, and the binding has been ex expertly stitched. A steel plate running along the book's spine anchors it to the pedestal. Glory stares down at it, frowning. Harrow's Manifesto. The handcrafted line of bullshit that he feeds to his initiates. We all ate it up with a smile and came away convinced that he was a genius. She leafs through the pages with an articulated finger. Looks like he's expanded it over the last few years. It's at least twice as thick as it was when I lived here. Maybe there's something in there that we can use. I wouldn't want to hang around long enough to find out. This is Harrow's personal library. He used to experiment in here. There were dangerous things in here, Alice. Sick things. I was never allowed in this room without Harrow. Nobody was. He said that it was our, for our safety, and I think he was telling the truth. She pauses. I feel uneasy being in here. I don't want to stay any longer than we have to. That's just your old self-talking, your past, coming back to haunt you. After a long pause, she nods. Maybe you're right. It could just be nerves. But that doesn't make the feeling any less real. Go ahead and leaf through the book if you want to, but try to be quick, okay? I don't want to stay in here any longer than we have to. Leaf through the beginning of the manifesto. You flip through the early pages of the manifesto, find what looks like a good place to jump in and start to read. Harrow's Manifesto. When I first set out on the path to free living, I realized that I'd have to rethink all of my earlier assumptions about life. I'd have to question my own values and beliefs, and I'd need the strength to trust in the answers that came to me. This prospect was daunting, but it was also necessary. The road to true freedom is paved with unanswered questions. After all, you can't learn to be free from a book. The answers won't come from a Bible or an instruction manual or a code of conduct. If you don't learn that, you'll never break your chains. Well, the, uh, the irony here is palpable. The path to true freedom is one that each of us must walk on his or her own. What makes life worth living? What in life is truly valuable and what is the dross that can be burned away? I spent weeks dissecting every aspect of my life to find the answers to these questions. Wow, whole weeks, really. Slowly, agonizingly, I pared down the list until only four items remained. These four items became the cornerstones of my new philosophy and the basis for everything that First Stell stands for. Love, the first cornerstone and the most important. Without love, life is bland and meaningless. Without love, we might as well be machines. Love what you do, love the people around you, but above all, love yourself. Self-determination, the second cornerstone. Each of us must be his or her own shepherd. No more gods and no more kings. 
Again, irony. Your life is your own. Lash out against anyone or anything that tries to treat you like property. An assault on your freedom is an assault on your whole being, and it must be met with an equally ferocious response. Charity, the third cornerstone. A, miter a miserly life is an empty life. If each of us is his or her own master, then nobody should live as a serf. By helping others along the path to enlightenment, so do we enrich our own lives. Passion, the final cornerstone. Complacency is poison. Be wary of it. Ambition is the key to fulfilling a fulfilling life. Don't settle for what it is. Don't settle for what is. Don't. Oh, that's weird. Don't settle for what is. If you do, you abandon what could be. You hear a rustling sound behind you. Glory. Turning, you can see a troubled look on her face. That ominous feeling is getting stronger, Alice. It feels like we're being watched. I want to believe that nothing's actually going to happen and that it's just her nerves. And I want to respect those as well because I feel like I don't know. This is a tricky thing to do because this is really well written and I think it's a really good portrayal of of trauma and PTSD and um, cult stuff and all kinds of things. They clearly did some research here. They're not just winging it or using tropes. Um, but part of me, unfortunately, still knows that this is a game and wants to see all of the that the game has to offer. Let me push it a little further. Continue reading. Leafing through the middle of the book, you find a section dedicated to Harrow's rules of living. Be free. Be free in all things and experience that freedom with your whole being, mind, body, and spirit. Discard the oppressive traditions of modesty and shame that you have been indoctrinated with since birth. The free thinker has no use for them. Your body is a source of pride, of pleasure, and of succor, of yourself and for others. For yourself and for others. Enjoy it and share that joy freely with those who desire it. Be selfish. Don't enslave yourself to others at the expense of your own health, happiness. Take what you want and do so unashamedly. Our desires are an, are an important part of what makes us human. Society has trained us to hide that part of ourselves from the world, but the free living person doesn't cower in the shadows. Own your desires and rejoice in them. Selflessness is ultimately dishonest, and dishonesty has no place in a free society. Show reverence. The free living person understands that the only true governance in this world is the law of nature, and that in nature there is hierarchy. The rabbit doesn't question the wolf. The mouse does not wonder why it must run from the cat. They do because they must. Their survival depends on it. As, in, as it is in nature, so it, it is at first still. Know your place in the food chain and understand the, me the mechanisms by which you can better yourself. Getting a little bit more cliche here. You leaf forward and find that there are at least 20 more pages worth of rules. Each is worded vaguely enough to have multiple interpretations. You hear another rustling sound, Glory, moving behind you. She stares down at the rules of living, a look of disgust on her face. Clear, simple rules, with a focus on instant gratification. I can see why this would be appealing to a street kid. She nods. That's what Harold wrote them for, and he mined an entire library's worth of 60s counterculture essays, new age self-help books, and cult manifestos to do it. There isn't a single original idea in this thing. That only matters to people to, to the people that know it's stolen. Glory freezes up, her shoulders hunch and her eyes narrow. Alice, that ominous feeling, it's getting closer. There's something in the room with us. I'm sure of it. We need to get out of here now. Uh, we're going to decide what to do in the next episode. I'll see you guys then.